the cell is stimulated to divide. Okay? With me so far? What's that? RAS is normally bound to GDP. And when the message comes for division from the outside of the cell, that GDP is, is, is uh, removed and GTP is put in. Okay? Now, in the normal scheme of things, everything works fine because RAS has a very interesting catalytic activity. The catalytic activity that it has is to cleave GTP and make GDP. That's how GDP ends up in there. So it's a switch that turns itself off. It works because RAS isn't very good at turning GTP into GDP. When the cell gets, when the, when the RAS gets GTP, it sort of sits there inside the RAS for a while, a while meaning a few minutes, before the enzyme breaks the GTP down to GDP. Once that happens, it sits there, GDP waiting, it's kind of bored, right? All right, now, that's in a normal cell. A cell that has a mutant form of RAS has the following thing happen to it. When the GTP gets in there, the RAS can't break it down. The RAS cannot break it down. Yes? Mm -hmm. Right. So in a mutant RAS, it gets the GTP, but now the GTP is there. It stays and it does not get broken down. What's the message the cell is going to get? Divide, 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 right? OK? Yes? Is the RAS what's mutated? It's the RAS that's mutated, yes. OK? Now, I'm going to tell you something that's going to scare you. What kind of mutations does it take for this to happen? There's an amino acid that's a glycine that's either in position 11 or 12, depending upon the uh, RAS that we're talking about that if that glycine is changed to any other amino acid, that RAS will not cleave GTP. So I'll say that again. All right? So there's, uh, within the RAS uh, enzyme, or RAS protein, all right, there's an amino acid glycine at either position 11 or 12, depending upon the RAS, and if that glycine is changed to any other amino acid, the RAS will not be able to cleave GTP, and therefore it will stay in the on state all of the time. Now, why is that scary? Well, that's scary because mutation of a single base at the place where you have a RAS can cause you to form a mutant RAS that can lead to a tumor. Now, first of all, I want to tell you that there's several steps in getting to a tumor, okay? So, but this is one of them. This is, a, this, is a, this is a very important one of them. You say, oh, well, one base, I've got three billion base pairs. Okay, my odds are one in three billion. Except you've got a trillion, over a trillion cells in your body. Okay? That means that you've had over a thousand opportunities for that RAS to be mutated. Okay? Even if we only mutate one in a billion, if we have a trillion cells, we still have a thousand opportunities to mutate that specific RAS. Now, do you see why people are worried about what they get in their air and their water and their food? The more you expose yourself to carcinogens, the more likely you are going to mutate that RAS to a very deadly form. Now, that's a little scary, okay? As I said, it's multiple steps to getting to a tumor. But it's known in the case of RAS that you can take in a mouse and you can change one base and make a mouse have a tumor if that one base is in RAS. Okay, be careful what you eat, what you drink, and the air that you breathe. Good advice, right? Okay, so that's RAS. Now, uh, what else do I want to say here? I've said a little bit about P53 already. P53. Um, I described earlier when we talked about DNA replication in eukaryotes. What did I say about P53? What, how did I describe it? It's what? 
It's monitoring replication. So we can kind of think of this as the sort of guardian of the genome. P53 does a quality control to make sure replication has completed properly. And if it doesn't find that replication has completed properly, then P53 will stop the replication process in its tracks and it will stimulate the production of what? DNA repair proteins, okay? Those DNA repair proteins will try to repair the damage. If they're successful, then P53 gets out of the way and replication proceeds, or division proceeds, okay? If they, if they are, if um, the repair proteins are not successful, P53 will stimulate the cell to commit suicide, okay? That cellular suicide is known as apoptosis, the most mispronounced word in all of biology, A P O P. T-O-S-I-S, -S. the second P is silent. It's not apoptosis, despite what a lot of numbskulls would try to tell you. Okay? All right. So that's what uh, P53 is. P53 is what we call a tumor suppressor. Why is it a tumor suppressor? Well, because when it's doing its thing properly, it's maintaining the genome from being damaged. We only see tumors related to P53 when we have damage to P53 that stops it from doing that function, okay? So for example, in certain types of colon cancer, P53 is damaged 90% of the time. It's damaged 90% of the time. It's unable to take that cell and cause that cell to commit suicide when there's unrepairable DNA. If you don't put that quality control in the DNA, what's going to happen over time with replication and mutation? Mutation is going to increase, 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 and now you've seen an example how increasing mutation can cause problems. RAS is only one of many for which we can have problems. Okay? So it's important that we have a functioning P53. It's important that we have a functioning RAS because if we don't have these things, then we're going to be in deep doo-doo. Okay, the last thing I want to mention is something called the, the MAP kinase signaling system. And I'm not showing you this to just give you all kinds of uh, things to memorize. That's not the point, okay? The point is that cells have to have a communication system in order for them to make decisions. They have to have a communication system. They have their own cellular network, as it were, ha ha, right? Like a cell phone, never mind. Okay, AT&T joke, insert your AT&T joke here, okay? They have a cellular network that actually um, does uh, help the cell to make that decision. That cellular network is um, the active way in which it communicates is through phosphorylation, putting phosphates on and in some cases taking phosphates off. There are a series of kinases and I hope that you remember that kinases are enzymes that put phosphates onto things. There are a series of kinases, one after the other, after the other, one phosphorylating the first one, the first one phosphorylating the second one, the second one phosphorylating the third one, each time activating them in series, one, two, three, four, by putting phosphates onto them. These cellular kinases are called MAP kinases, M-A-P kinases, and they play a critical role in the decision of a cell to divide. When MAP kinases are active, they're stimulating the cell to divide. Now, one of the things, one of the messages that you're getting here from me is that there are multiple ways to tell a cell to divide. If there are multiple ways to tell a cell to divide, there's multiple ways that we can screw up that signal. There are multiple ways in which a cell can be transformed from being a regular cell under control to be uh, a cell that is out of control and dividing uncontrollably. It's partly for this reason that there are so many different cancers with very, very widely ranging causes, widely ranging treatments that will be necessary to stop them. Okay? So that's part of the, of the problem with dealing with cancer. Yes, sir? 
you said one kinase phosphorylates the next kinase? Yep. Phosphorylates the next kinase, phosphorylates the next kinase. So it's a chain of events. And when we look at the complexity of these events that occur in the cell, it is absolutely the biggest mess of spaghetti that you've ever seen in your life. Okay? This is a very simple pathway. You should see some of the hairy versions of the signaling pathways that occur inside of cells. Okay? They're very, very complicated. Okay. Let's see, I think that's about what I want to say with respect to this. Any questions on this before I move on? Okay. And let's see. Oh, I, actually, I want to give, a, give a, a message here. Okay. Part, I haven't given you the word for this. Part of what I'm talking about here, this, this cell communicating with its environment, okay? So if I'm a bone cell and my brain says, hey, it's time to divide, my brain cell is going to put out a growth hormone that's going to go bind to that bone cell, and the bone cell goes, oh, it wants me to divide, I'm going to divide. I've already described to you briefly how that can happen with RAS and also how that could happen with uh, the MAP kinase system. Okay? Another way, in, uh, I should say another way, what's happening in this process is something called signal transduction. <coughs> okay, so I want you to know what that term means. Signal transduction is the process of moving information across the cell wall or the cell membrane. It's the process of moving information across the cell membrane. Interestingly, most of the signaling molecules do not cross the membrane themselves. Most of the signaling molecules do not cross the membrane. They bind to target proteins on the cell surface, and the target proteins then communicate that information. So signal transduction is the, is the process of moving that information across the cell membrane. <coughs> okay, does that make sense? Yes, sir. Andy? So the, 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 uh, mo the, the things that are communicating this information on the outside of the cell do not cross the membrane. So this might be a growth hormone, for example, that's binding to something out here and causing the, the cell to respond accordingly. Now what this suggests to us is that we could screw up the binding of the hormone to the cell surface. What if the proteins that are in the membrane of the cell think they're binding to a hormone, but they're not? Right? They think they're binding to a hormone, but they're not. What are they going to do? They're going to tell the cell, divide, 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 divide. We see another place where we can screw up the system. So if we mutate the proteins that are involved in that signal transduction process, we could have bad signaling going on, and we might have the same problem. In fact, that's exactly what happens. I see another hand back over here. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so malignant tumors are out of control growth and they will eventually metastasize and let go and do other things. Benign tumors don't have that same characteristic. They will generally go and grow for a certain uh, point. They won't, go, they won't divide uncontrollably and they will maintain their attachments. That's, that's a, a, a general difference between the two. They could have some of, the, some of the same root causes, but they won't have the exact cause of a, of a malignant tumor, no. Yes? Absolutely. Very good question. Very good question. So I just described to you that the receptor could screw up, but it's just as conceivable that the hormone itself could be screwed up. Maybe the hormone gets on there and it can't de disattach itself, and so it just continues to, to stimulate, 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 stimulate. Okay. There's many, many ways in which a cell can become uh, a, 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 a transformed cell. We call these transformed because they're transformed in the sense that they lose their ability to control